So if you're a creator and thinking about switching into the new Intel platform, then this is probably the best part, at least at this point when I'm filming this video, what you can get for your Intel 12900K, for example. So a lot of things new, let's talk about it. Are you sick of seeing activate Windows message on your desktop? Well, it's time to activate your Windows and do it cheap. Go on to whokeys.com where you can find official license keys. If you're looking for Windows 10 Pro key, for example, then all you have to do is search for Windows 10 Pro, select the license and add it to the basket. Use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. Once you have the license key on your email, click here, here, type in your license key, hit activate and you're all done. Check out whokeys.com in the description below and don't forget to use the code TN20 to get a 20% discount. By the way, if you haven't checked out yet my Intel i9-12900K review for creators and from creators perspective, then check that out. Otherwise, this won't make as much sense. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I'll link it up there. So then let's have a look what's inside the box and then we're going to talk about the features and things. So over here, we have the Wi-Fi antenna and it is actually quite a good Wi-Fi antenna as well because some of the other companies make Wi-Fi antennas that have like the most annoying thing which is that no magnet over there but this one over here there's a magnet over here which means that you can just like plug it anywhere on the side of your PC case or on the top of your PC case and it's gonna stick there rather than just flopping around. I like that a lot. It's not any kind of Wi-Fi antenna. It's Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. So these are pretty fancy specs there. Then we obviously have the motherboard. Let me put this on the side. So underneath we have our ProArt like user manual, user guide. There's a lot of new things, so I recommend reading this. We have the ASUS Control Center Express, things like that, QR codes. We have a CD, sorry, DVD here for some of the things, you know, old fashioned way. I wish this was a USB stick as always. And then underneath here, there's a few other things. So first of all, we have some SATA cables over here. As you can see, usual data cables. Two of them are angled and then two of them are just straight and straight. Then we have these little rubber squares things over here and I'm gonna tell you why you need them in a moment when we get to the M.2 installation. So there's four of them over here. Then we have some more like the Asus new like toolless M.2 latches that just hold your M.2 drive in place. So there's two more of these. And then we have the front panel connector over here, which is amazing thing to add in here. So you can put all your front panels of the case in here and then slot it into your motherboard rather than just fiddling about with these single like small cables, very, very annoying. Interestingly enough, I didn't get any display cables with this motherboard. And you might be wondering why, it's because you need a display port like input from your graphics card to uh, the motherboard if you wanna use the Thunderbolt 4 ports. So then, this is what the board looks like. And to be honest, it looks very, very fancy. And I'm a little bit like, uh, you know, jealous that the Intel Z690 board got a little bit of a fancier finish than the AMD side X570. Obviously, when AMD releases their new generation of CPUs, maybe we'll get uh, a new, you know, version of this, but this looks much more premium than the X570 for AMD. Like there's some golden or like a little angle trims over here. I just like the design, okay? So there's a lot of things new on this motherboard. So let's have a look you know, what's changed. First of all, you've got the new Intel socket and it opens and works differently than the previous socket. So just have a, like a latch that latches, latches like from the top. Then as you might see, there's two holes on the motherboard here. Asus has had the two sets of holes for the old and new mounting hardware for your coolers. So let's say you've got an old cooler and you just exchange a motherboard. You can use your cooler with the old mounting hardware but the recommended way is still waiting for your cooler manufacturer to, you know, reach out to them and say, look, I've got a new motherboard. Can you send me the new LGA 700 compatible mounting system? Because that would be the optimal cooling performance for your CPU. Then on the top over here, you have your power connectors for your CPU and there's eight plus four over here. Might as well make our way around. So over here we have the PWM connectors and there's actually eight all together on the board and they're all the same power rating, like 12 watts. But this one over here is the AIO pump one, which always will run 100% speed. So you can configure the speeds. Whereas all the other ones over here, CPU fans and case fans. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. All of these have PWM like controls in your BIOS that you can change and things like that. Then over here on the top over here, there's a CPU over voltage connector. And this is something that I've never ever seen in any of the other motherboards before. So basically through this connector, you can actually over volt your CPU's current thing. So there's like this little, like a plastic jumper basically. And then there's three pins. If you look from the top, if the left one and the middle one are connected, like it comes from the uh, default, then it's like the default voltage setting. If you change them to the right one and the middle one, so jump the right one and the middle one, apparently your CPU gets more voltage and like, just overclocks the voltage thing. So edit Larry over here. Basically this feature isn't as fancy as it sounds. By this jumper, you can just literally raise the voltage ceiling to the CPU. So on default, if the left and the middle one have been plugged in, then the CPU should get about 1.7 volts maximum to the CPU. If you jump the middle one and the right one, the voltage ceiling will be raised to 1.9 volts. Then we have this RGB connector. This is a 12 volt connector. And then this is a five volt ARGB headers. And then there's two more on the bottom over here. So three five volt, one 12 volt connector. Moving down over here, we have our 24 pin ATX. A power connector as well as the six pin PCIe power connector and this six pin power connector is required because next to this power connector there is a USB-C front panel connector header but this time and I haven't seen any other motherboards that do that this also supports 60 watt power through this USB-C port which is basically the same as your MacBook charger so if you've got your let me see, it's over here. This MacBook charger that comes with my MacBook is also 60 watts uh, rated, so I could literally plug the USB-C cable in the top of my PC case and get still 60 watts out. It also supports Quick Charge 4.0, so get your phones and stuff charged super, super fast and happy to see that. But that's why you also need this power connector on the side over here to be delivering power to all of these other components. Then you have another USB 3.0, front panel header connector over here that is a uh, five gigabits rated you have six sata ports over here and another two over there and then there's eight all together this is your chipset the z690 chipset cooled passively very nice so the motherboard will run very very quiet now moving down here we have our front panel connectors next to this chassis fan and the sata port there's two pins over here and this is like your thermal connectors so if you want to connect another like a thermal probe over there you can monitor components or like other parts of your PC's uh, thermals. Then we have two USB 2.0 headers. Before I'm gonna remove the heat sinks, we wanna have talk about the RAM because over here we have four slots of DDR5 memory and it supports up to 128 gigabytes of it, but not ECC memory. So super fast DDR5, but it's very important that you do not try to attempt to connect DDR, you know, three, four in here because the notch is in a different place and it's not gonna be backwards compatible. You need to have motherboards that support DDR4. Because of the 12th gen on Intel, you actually have motherboards that support DDR4. For example, this Asus Tough Gaming motherboard that you see D4 in the end. I think this stands for DDR4. Now, I'm not sure if all the other manufacturers do that, but I know that Asus, you know, this is easy to see. DDR4, okay, I can put my DDR4 in here, but if it's just without the D4, like this one over here, Z590, then like the default is DDR5 memory. Let's remove the heat sinks and show you what M.2 options do we have over here. So as you can see, all the heat sinks have thermal pads on them to keep your SSDs cool. Unfortunately, it's just one-sided, not double-sided as on some motherboards, but I think it's all right. It, it doesn't actually matter. So one cool thing about the M.2 storage over here is that this is the toolless Asus, you know, latch over here. So you don't need to actually screw any of the screws. And remember we had those little rubber squares in the box over there. These go on top of these like rubber square standoffs. So basically, if your M.2 drive has chips only on one side on the top, then you want to add or install the actual like little rubber square over here. So it's gonna pack it up and give a proper support this so that the heat sink on the top will actually make proper contact with your M.2 slot and you get like better thermals for your M.2 drives. If you have chips on both sides of the M.2, 
on the bottom as well do not install that square over there because then it might actually boom your ssd and can damage it so don't do that all of these four slots of m.2 over here are pca4 speeds rated and all of them can run all of them at the same time like maximum speed absolutely fantastic the first one is cpu and the bottom three are from the chipset all of them are x4 slots so no problem over there they are also backwards compatible so if you have a like 3.0 pca 3.0 drive then you can slot them in there another thing that it's different though is that this fourth spot over here is the only one that supports also sata m.2 drives but also the third slot over here supports the extra long m.2 so if you have like one of those intel optane ones that are super super long then you can install it on the third slot over here so i'm happy to see four ender 2 storage that all can run at the same time and the cool caveat over here is that at the same time while all of the m.2s are occupied you can also run all of your eight sata drives at full speed so there is no switch in between as far as i can see None of these like M.2s will like disable some of the SATA drives that some of the other motherboards what happens for example the X570 there's some of the switches over there so you can't use some of the other or some of the SATA boards get disabled on this one everything's full blast full speed all the time no compromises there so now the PCIe slots over here so the long slots or the big by 16 slots over here the top one is PCIe 5.0 x16 slot okay and this is CPU configured and then the bottom one is x8 configured so this is always x8 even if you don't have like one um, connected to the top this is always x8 it can't be x16 um, and then this bottom one over here is pcie uh, like 3.0 speeds these pcie 5.0 slots over here are backwards compatible as well so you don't need to worry about that but as far as we know right now in the market there isn't anything that you can slot in here and take actual advantage of the pcie 5.0 bandwidth which is insane to have that here it's fantastic but kind of useless at the same time but it's fancy i like it so let's talk about the io of the motherboard over here on the top over here we have two display ports in and that is to you know get the video signal out from these two thunderbolt ports so these will come from your graphics card hdmi out if you want to get a video signal out for example from the igpu then you can get it out from here bear in mind this is not supported on all of the 12th gen gpus because not all of the cpus on the 12th gen have igpu then we have a 10 gigabit lan and 2.5 gigabit lan port 10 gigabit lan makes me super excited fantastic to see that here perfect exactly what great is one like you want to run an ass boom put it in there fantastic then we have some usb 3 ports over here all of these turquoise ones are 10 gigabits rated speeds so six of them all together no usb 2.0 or none of the usb like 3.0 everything just 10 gigabit then two of the intel thunderbolt 4 ports super fast super cool we have wi-fi 6e and bluetooth 5.0 cables over here this is where you connect your antenna to and then we have some of the audio outputs five jack outputs unfortunately there isn't a sbdif out so no optical out for the audio then bios flashback for this over here so you can update your bios without a cpu which is fantastic now there's one thing that i forgot to mention that this the front panel usb-c connector it's not just 60 watt supported it is also usb 3.2 gen 2x2 part which basically means that you can get 20 gigabits bandwidth from this now there isn't a lot of devices that can support that but it's a very fancy part and i haven't seen any of the other motherboards feature this in there you have to have a very high-end motherboard so to see that here is absolutely fantastic so if you're thinking about picking up the i9 12900k then as a creator this is a beast of a motherboard for you like i don't think there's anything that i'm like still lacking that i want from this motherboard we have lan ports loads of m.2 storage fast ram we have fast usb ports connectors we can charge our phones fast just everything's fantastic if you want to pick that out i'm going to leave it linked in the description below so feel free to check that out question to you does this motherboard make you want to switch to intel is the team blue back let me know in the comments below. Likes if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.